So we knew Nvidia was releasing a few new RTX 3000 GPUs as early as January, but this fourth one, we really had no idea. I thought myself Nvidia had absolutely given up on it, but we have some new news and it may be coming with the other three GPUs. Let's talk about what it could be. And if you're building your PC, you're gonna need a Windows key. Remember to check out today's sponsor, cdkdeals.com. Yes, these keys are even gonna work in Windows 11 whenever you upgrade to that. Very simple process. If you use my code CC20, you're gonna get a nice discount at checkout and it's gonna get rid of that annoying Windows watermark when it's not activated. So check out CDK deals for your CD key needs. And remember, it will work with Windows 11. Now back to the video. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Remember to subscribe and smash that like button. As we get closer and closer to the end of the year, of course the GPU drought continues and the worst part of it is that even when there are GPUs, we have extremely high prices, but that's not keeping Nvidia from releasing new GPUs, especially as we go into the next year. Now, none of these are supposed to be sort of the new generation RTX 4000. They're just supposed to be sort of the bumped up version of what's going on now with the RTX 3000. Remember, it's been over one year since these GPUs were released, so not to say that they're getting long in the tooth, they're still fantastic performance-wise. The issue with them has really been sort of the manufacturing delays, availability, and now the pricing certainly has become a very, very big issue. So performance really isn't going to be sort of something that we have to complain about for a very long time, especially as I've mentioned before, even AAA titles and games coming out on PC. Some are kind of trickling out, but really there aren't like a tremendous amount coming out where it makes sense to have one of these high-end GPUs, of course, aside from a few games and a few use cases. So these are the GPUs that we spoke about before, and then we're going to talk about this surprise one and why it may actually be important. So First, we talked about some type of a 3090 Ti. Uh, first, we thought it might be a 3090 Super, but perhaps it might make more sense if it's a 3090 Ti. Now, this GPU, of course, will perform better than the existing 3090. Really, the key point here is, is that the uh, memory, the VRAM, the GDDR6X, likely would be faster, which can be beneficial, especially in content creation type applications. Remember, even though this isn't sort of titled a Titan GPU, it certainly does play a hybrid role with gamers and and content creators. It's certainly a very unique GPU. It's the only one that Nvidia hasn't slapped the LHR or light hash rate moniker on it, meaning that even for crypto mining, it has its full potential. I guess Nvidia really didn't want to sort of in any way, shape or form minimize the possible performance and the possible market for this GPU. Because after all, when times get a little bit tough and this GPU craze dies down a little bit, they're going to have to sell as many 3090s as they possibly can. And that's a harder GPU to stomach when you have 3080s in stock or whatever GPU may be that's cheaper and performs as good. So I think they kind of future proof themselves by allowing it to really function at its full capability. Because after all, it is a hyper expensive GPU, even if you don't consider any of the shortages and the inflated pricing, already it's an expensive GPU with its MSRP. So Nvidia really does have to keep it sort of as, as almost a halo GPU and therefore not really notch any features out of it. So the 3090 Ti, I feel is just going to continue that with, you know, faster performance, likely incremental. I don't think we're going to see any massive performance over a 3090. If you look at the 3080 Ti compared to the 3080, the price was higher, of course, and the performance really wasn't all that great. Just had a little bit more VRAM. Now, the 3090 VRAM should stay the same at 24 gigabytes. Only difference is it's going to be a little bit faster bandwidth, um, along with some other improvements to the GPU, should make it and keep it pretty much the top performer. Now, a 3070 Ti with a possible 16 gigabytes of VRAM or possibly a 3070 Super or something like that with more VRAM, 16 gigabytes, that was also possibly in the works for early next year. They think maybe we'll start to hear more of it maybe January of 2022, which after all is only two or three months away, not really too far away at all. So, that GPU, certainly interesting. You would think that it would be to compete with the AMD GPUs, which all pretty much have 16 gigabytes um, when we're talking about in terms of this sort of higher end level, like the 6800, the 6900 XT. They all have 16 gigabytes of VRAM, albeit it is the slower GDDR6 and not the X variant. So we'll see what happens with that GPU. And the other one that was supposedly coming was the 2060, which is the last generation's GPU, but it was going to have 12 gigabytes of VRAM, just like the 
3060 does. And that GPU, the purpose really was to maybe make it a little easier with the GPU shortage and things like that. Just having an older generation GPU, I think Nvidia might be able to produce more of them than something from the RTX 3000 series. So that was the theory there. That's something we may possibly see. Remember, all of these are really subject to change, much like the fourth GPU that we're going to talk about now, which had already been slated for release or at least rumored a long time ago. After the 3080 came out, the next GPU that we thought was going to be released was some type of a 3080, but with more VRAM. Now, the 3080 has 10 gigabytes of the fast VRAM, so it's not terrible by any means. It's not slow. But the problem is all of these other GPUs, including the much cheaper 3060, I already have 12 gigabyte of VRAM and the AMD GPUs come packing 16 gigabytes. So Nvidia certainly has some pressure there, even though VRAM doesn't make the huge difference unless you're playing in 4K or doing content creation. I guess at least optically, it does seem a little funny if the other high-end GPUs have a lot of VRAM, but the 3080, which is supposed to be one of the highest tier GPUs that Nvidia makes, only has 10 gigabytes of VRAM, even though it is, like I said, the faster version. So something had to be done back then and we thought there was going to be a possible 20 gigabyte 3080 being released maybe they would call it a super or whatever it may be we even thought that 3080 ti was going to have 12 gigabytes of vram but as we saw with the 3080 ti having only 12 gigabytes of vram now the gpu that's slated for a potential release or a potential announcement in january it's going to be another version of the 3080 but this time with 12 gigabytes of vram and we're assuming the gddr6x now I don't think they could really slap on much more than that because then that will kind of outclass the 3080 Ti and that doesn't really make sense for them to do. So this would be potentially a 3080 Super. I mean, we already have the 3080 Ti with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So there really isn't too much reason for a 3080 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. The only reasons and arguments you could really make for it. I mean, if you look at the 3080, 10 gigabyte probably is not gonna look very future-proof. Um, as the year goes on, as, you know, as into next year, before NVIDIA actually releases RTX 4000. The 3080 with only 10 gigabytes is going to be a little bit long in the tooth. People are going to see other GPU releases with much more VRAM. So I could see it um, optically how that would make sense if they at least release a 3080 Super with 12 gigabytes. Because then at least NVIDIA could say, oh, listen, we're competitive. 12 gigabytes of VRAM is all you really need for gaming pretty much for the next few years. And sure, AMD has 16 gigabytes, but theirs is a slower version. Um, that actually does make a difference in not only content creation but in some games and other applications that speedy vram certainly makes a difference of course one of the big things to watch uh, out here for is going to be vram temperatures as we've seen the 3080 and especially the 3090 does have very hot running VRAM. A lot of people who do content creation and render like in 6K, 8K, I think a lot of them will hear their fans spinning up. And of course, the usual crypto miners that really taxes the VRAM a lot will certainly, nope, by now they've all changed their thermal pads or water cool the GPUs. Definitely a big problem. And you can expect it to sort of still run hot in the 3080. Nothing's really going to change there. You know, the 12 gigabyte version of the 3080, if they call it potentially a 3080 Super. So, I mean, the market it is already really segmented with all of these <laughs> GPUs with like incremental differences in performance. We have the 3080 already, so then we would have this 3080 potentially super with a little bit more VRAM, potentially a little faster performance. It can't be too much faster because then it's going to encroach on the space of the 3080 Ti, which also has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So that has to maintain some type of an advantage. It has to be in the regular performance of the GPU because the VRAM, I don't really see a 3080 going over that 12 gigabytes. And then of course, over that you're going to have the 3090 and whatever 3090 ti comes after or something like that now even though performance it's really close 3080 3080 ti and 3090 not that much between them in terms of you know gaming performance now the 3080 super that's just going to be the fourth one to kind of slot in there to be very very close in terms of performance the only thing that we could say here there is a pretty big gap between the pricing of these gpus i mean look at the msrp as laughable as msrp prices are nowadays 
of the original 3080, we're talking 699 original MSRP. And then the 3080 Ti jumps all the way up to 1199 MSRP with the 3090 close by at 1499. Now there's a big gap between $700 and that $1,200. That's a $500 gap. If you split that difference down the middle, you'll be somewhere between that sort of $900 to $1,000 price range. Now, I don't know if they would price it maybe $100 more than the old 3080 at $799 or go all the way up to $999. Might make sense if they do $999 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. At least then it slots, you know, really perfectly in between a 3080 and a 3080 Ti. I really do think that's probably going to be the upper price limit for an MSRP pricing. Of course, secondhand values are something else. It's going to be worth a lot more than that. And the third party AIB partners, of course, will price this GPU much higher, much like you find 3080 Ti's that are supposed to be 1200 bucks. Most of the third parties are between 1400 to 1800 and even higher encroaching on 3090 pricing territory. So the 3080 Super with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, if that's the supposed name, I think about a thousand bucks is the max that you can get for MSRP. And if we use our little calculator to figure out MSRP to what it actually costs on the street, usually, let me see, boop, 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 around two times to two and a half times, where at least the 3080, a lot of times was about two to two and a half times. You would see it for almost 2000 bucks on the street. All right, guys, so hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about this yet another GPU being added. Hopefully it's a little more available. I know most are completely out of stock. Most of the time are just really expensive. So we'll keep an eye on it. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.